Sure. Morning, Tony, you ready? All right, he's ready. <laughs> okay, we have uh, we have three things today, Chairman and Commission. Um, uh, some guy named Tim Norton's here to talk about aviation museum so I'll pass the microphone to him he just kind of wants to give an overview of operations and some challenges uh, at that site uh, then we're going to bring up the recommendation for at-large board appointments policy again kind of uh, can continue to refine that and hopefully prepare that for uh, agenda for next week's meeting and then we'll have a quick agenda review for the uh, uh, October 16th meeting so that's all we have planned today any questions before we get started nope Good morning, Tim. welcome Well, let me get close so you can hear me. Can you hear me? Uh, thank you, Mr. Manager and Mr. Chairman. Thanks for letting me come today. I'm, I'm here to talk about the Kansas Aviation Museum. Uh, hopefully all of you know, I have talked to all the commissioners, but all of you know that I've accepted the position of executive director. I don't plan to make a whole new career out of that, uh, <coughs> uh, like I did some other things earlier in my life. But I, I do plan to help the Kansas Aviation Museum found uh, some stable ground uh, and move forward. It's hard to call yourself the air capital of the world at your Eisenhower Airport and not have a world-class aviation museum in your community. I think we all know that aviation probably took flight in uh, North Carolina, but it grew up and was raised right here in Kansas. I mean, Wichita has a very strong aviation background history and future and uh, I've taken that position with the idea that we'll work really hard to take it to that next level now you know those have said that the location is not perfect and it's not uh, we do have some strains and I'll talk about those real quick I have given uh, the manager and the chairman kind of some talking points I didn't make them for everybody but I'll go through those if that's okay uh, the first thing is the current financial condition I I've given you a packet that uh, Brent Shelton's sent me on when you request anything from the county and it's got some financials in there I won't go detail on that I can tell you that they've been on the edge for a couple of years of being insolvent they're con constantly raising money they're raising memberships, they're having events, but they've always been on the edge of uh, not making it. And that's that hand to mouth is not good for that entity. So we've already taken some steps uh, on the expenditure side and the revenue side to firm up and stabilize. Um, I, I'm going to request from the county some help on that. I've already talked to all the commissioners, and I'd hope you <laughs> are still willing to support uh, the Aviation Museum. But currently, we're not insolvent. We've got money in the bank. Some of it's restricted, but it's not going to carry us into the future. And most importantly, it's not going to give me time to do the kind of things that I think we need to do to stabilize a nonprofit and to make it functional for many, many years in the future. And to realize its capabilities and potential. So having said that, I'll be glad to answer questions on financials, but I'd like to go ahead and go through my talk, all of my talking points. The next thing is we're going to have a board retreat first week of November. I'm going to bring the board together, and we're going to talk turkey about financial responsibilities, fiduciary responsibilities of a board, uh, the fundraising efforts that we need to take on the private side so that we're not constantly chasing uh, government money. There's plenty of grant opportunities out there. There's aviation companies here that have foundations, and we'll work on all that. But the board retreat will do two things, talk about finances and set in concrete a strategic plan for one year, five years, and 10 years of what the aviation museum needs to do to stabilize itself and take it to the next level. Uh, I have submitted the documents, like I said. I hope that gives you all the information you need to make a request to the county. Uh, I've asked for $50,000. Uh, you've been very gracious in the past to put some money into the <coughs> B-52 restoration and commit to other monies in future years. So 
Uh, I am, I do have a request there, and hopefully you would consider that. Uh, I've got with me the event rentals. It, just uh, answer some questions, and I'll pass those down to the commissioners. Uh, we uh, we use the Art Deco building for weddings and anniversaries and conferences and other events. And just now through the end of the year, we're already booked for about $14,000 worth of income. And most of that's totally in-house being signed. Uh, that money is on the books and we're still adding. So we'll continue to use that as a venue to raise money. And that gives you a little idea that we're pretty active. We're trying to find ways to fill up the coffers without a handout, that we're actually going to build a business plan that helps sustain ourselves. At the end of the uh, year, most nonprofits will do uh, some kind of fundraising, uh, donation letter, solicitation, and we've never done that. And I've got a letter here. I'll pass that down. You're welcome to take one and send me a check if you'd like to personally. And that's what that letter will be about. I've got around a thousand lists or a thousand uh, addresses of people that we'll send this to just to ask money to perpetuate the, the mission of the uh, center. So once again, that's something that we're going to do that's, that's never been done so that we'll actually start trying to make sure that we have a plan, a strategic fundraising plan uh, that takes care of our needs, once again, without having to be propped up. Uh, the next year, uh, we've really started working on a budget, but a fundraising budget too, with the cal a calendar that indicates exactly when and where and how and how much we'd like to raise for certain events. Well, uh, some of you attended the Hall of Fame where uh, three people were inducted into the Aviation Hall of Fame from the sta state of Kansas. That event uh, was split off from the original gala. The gala is this Saturday, and there, those two events were too close together. People were confused about it. It split the tickets. So we're going to move the Hall of Fame to the spring, move the gala to the, leave it in the fall, and then have, have our golf tournament in the summer three unique fundraising events, and we'll actually market those events. Uh, we've kind of done it hand to mouth, and one thing I know about is marketing. You know, I spent 29 years in retail, and it was all about getting footsteps in the building and then taking somebody's money, and we'll really work hard on that with a marketing campaign that tries to drive people into the building and let them fall in love with it and want to put their money into our mission. Uh, marketing is always a challenge for nonprofits because when money is tight, the first thing that goes is your marketing budget. You quit doing mailings, you quit doing solicitations, you don't have events, you don't uh, put your little ad in visitor's guides and things like that because it costs money. Uh, I've got two or three people lined up that are going to do some in-kind things for us and some a couple of donors that are going to give some money to get back on the marketing plane so that we can actually market the Aviation Museum. There's a wonderful collection out there, the beautiful Art Deco building, but it doesn't mean anything if you don't get footsteps in there and have people see it and spread the word. So we'll work really hard on that. The next thing is membership and attendance. Uh, last year we had 23,000 people come through the Aviation Museum. You benchmark that against Botanica, which is around 380,000, Exploration Place, 400,000, the Sedgwick County Zoo, what, 600,000 plus, 23,000 drop in the bucket. And we'll work real hard to get people in the building to, to see what we're doing out there. Um, membership is dreadfully low under... Uh, under 400 in individual and family memberships. I, I don't know the numbers for the zoo and Botanica and, uh, and Exploration Place, but I think it's probably in the thousands, and we can do better, and we will. We'll work on that. Uh, we've already got some unique partnerships starting to form up out in the community so that we will 
increase membership pretty quickly. Now, some of it's going to be, uh, unfortunately, will be giveaway kinds of things to get people to come and, and see it. But I think that's okay. Uh, you know, as an old marketing guy, many times we bought Crest toothpaste at $1.05 uh, and sold it for $0.99. Cents. People go, why? You're losing money on that. Well, you got them to walk by the grandma bait, which was the children's clothing. You got them to go to electronics. They saw other things that you made 50% on. So we're going to have to do a little shrewd marketing and some giveaways, but we'll get some footsteps in the building, and that'll help perpetuate people falling in love with the aviation community like so many people have. The final thing I've got is a facilities update. It needs a new roof and it needs tuck pointing, both at the same time. But the city owns the building, so I'm working with the city to be sure that they understand what needs to happen to that municipal airport. Many people don't know that during the war years, the 40s, that was the fourth busiest airport in the United States because of the aviation industry, because of the military coming here, because the B-52 and the, the bombers were built here very busy building. So it has a history of it on its own without any artifacts in it. But we've got a, a wonderful collection. And one of the problems is a lot of it hadn't been freshened up. But we've got archives and artifacts being fixed every day that will go into new exhibits. Uh, I've connected with WSU, uh, Jay Price, who's a history professor that understands this community pretty well and the aviation He's come out and visited and walked through and given us ideas on exhibits and history that we, we storytelling we might want to do. Uh, Darty Par Harpool, who is a marketing professor out at WSU, has come out and we've talked about how do we get interns to come out and help with our marketing and writing brochures and doing videos. Uh, I'm getting ready to connect with some uh, public relations firms that I have connections with so that we really understand how to market what we've got. So we're moving forward on all those things. <clears throat> Facilities is always an issue when you have an old building like that. It is on the National Historic Registry. It's one of only four WPA airports that were built during that time period of the late 20s and 30s that still exist and is functional. And I think we have a the ability and probably the need to preserve it, whether it houses the Aviation Museum from now to till eternity or it becomes an event center, it still needs to be preserved. So with that, you've got my request. Uh, I hope you'll consider it, and I'll answer any questions that Very good. Thanks, Tim. Any questions from the commissioners? Tim, on your uh, financials, are you on calendar year? We are. Okay, thanks. We'll in that pretty soon. We, uh, one of the things you'll see in that is that they budgeted for a little shortfall, and I think that's the wrong way to budget. So we'll either budget <coughs> to have a reserve or we'll budget even dollars for next year. Uh, the good news is that we're not going to have that shortfall and won't have to dip into reserves. That I've already cut enough and we've increased revenue enough that I think by the end of the year we may come out even. And I think that's good news because we were going to be about sixty-five to 70000 upside down. So I think I've already got that smoothed out. And with the gala, what we've earned there, and our fundraising letter, I think we'll end up the year pretty well. Does that answer your question, Pete? Right. Other questions? I don't have any questions. I just have a comment. Um, so I went, well, I do have a question, actually. Um, so I took my daughter there this weekend um, to the Girls in Aviation, and she had the best time. I mean, she really didn't want to leave. And I'm like, I'm hungry. we got to go. But she, I mean, she, I, I just feel like it's a really, it's a hidden gem in our community because it really is hidden. And that's, I mean, it's surrounded completely, you know, by the air base and so I just wonder like what is your strategy to help people understand its location signage those kinds of things because if you're trying to find it it kind of is do I take this I mean it's kind of hidden so do you have do you have any any strategy for like a new sign or 
Well, I, I have had the chance to travel with my two grandsons for the last three years in the summer, and we've been to quite a few presidential libraries, the Civil Rights Museum, the Oklahoma City Memorial, the Dealey Plaza Museum at the Book Depository. And one thing I'll tell you is that historic sites many times are in terrible locations. Eisenhower Museum is in the back of Abilene. It's behind the Greyhound Dog Museum. It's behind the Russell Stover Museum. It is not in the best place, but people find it because it's a historic site. It's where Eisenhower boys were raised and where he was born and where he's buried. The Truman Museum is the same thing. It's in the back of Independence, Kansas. It's, it's not off the interstate. It's in the middle of town where Harry and Bess had their home. So uh, even the Civil Rights Museum, it's wrapped around the Lorraine Hotel in downtown Memphis in the, one of the worst parts of town. But it's a phenomenal place because it's historic, and you can't change that location. So, yeah, location's not great, but we'll figure out a way to make it so imperative that people like yourself that has a daughter that wants to be a pilot will fall in love with that facility, fall in love with what's going on there. And, you know, we have a rich history here from Cessna, Beechcraft, Stearman, Mooney, Learjet, Swallow, a Travel Air. If you go through the litany of aviation that we've had here and the new... The new groups, I mean, Airbus, Spirit, I mean, none of those were around in the beginning. They're all hybrids of our history here. And one of the things I say is that we're going to touch the past but see the future because there's a huge future upside with the Innovation Campus, with NCAT, which is, you know, a county facility, with NIAR, with... Uh, all the things that are going on in aviation in our community, there's a rich history here. You know, we have nothing about Airbus at the museum, but it's part of the new history of, of Kansas and Wichita aviation. So we're going to try to find those things that compel people to drive that far. Actually, you can get from downtown Wichita, you can get to the aviation museum quicker than the zoo. So let's, you know, it's, if you're, a, if you're an east sider, the zoo seems like it's really far away. And so if you're a north sider, yeah, it seems like the aviation museum is far away. We'll work on all that to make it inviting. Uh, I've got ideas about how we uh, make it really inviting to be able to come in through the front doors of the museum instead of a side door. Because that, that terminal building and walking into the past is going to be very important. But I, I think that's a compelling question because it's what worries everybody. Is that the right place? Does it need to be next exploration place on the river? Oh, I'm not saying move it at all. I don't, I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I just, it was just kind of, I'm glad we found it. I mean, I'd been there before, but I just wonder others that might not be you know, familiar with the area. I think once you get there, it just kind of sucks you in. So I, I love the area, and I love <coughs> the museum itself and the, the ceiling. I mean, it's just a really great place. So I'm, I'm excited that you're doing what you're doing. Um, I think that it's going to be a really great thing for us to keep, keep going in our community. Well, I think it, it has many purposes. One is tourism. Bring people here. I, I walk around there and try to introduce myself to people that are walking through and they're from all over the world. I, I met somebody from Amsterdam the other day and people from all over the United States that have a love of aviation or find out that, you know, something about Wichita and says, that's unique, I'm going to stop by there. So we've got a great story to tell. We've just got to, to freshen up the exhibits. We're going to have to take it into the 21st century too. We're not as interactive as we should be. I mean, we should have touch screens and QR codes and all the things that modern museums have to suck people in. I mean, not everybody wants to go and spend 20 minutes looking at a jet engine and saying, I worked on that back in 1949. Not everybody can do that. A five-year-old kid's going to want something that's exciting and new and fresh and they, they can touch. So we'll try to figure that out because we've got a whole new generation of history that we're writing right now 
that needs to be documented and captured and story told. Now, some of it's being told at expiration place with design bill fly, but that doesn't tell it all. And uh, you don't get to, not too many people get tours of NIAR, and there's a lot going on there. So we'll try to blend all that into to the historical part of it, but also talk about aviation in Kansas too. So, question. Uh, thank, thank you for uh, coming today, Mr. Norton. Um, after you came and approached us, and, and I do remember supporting that a couple of years ago, I think uh, Commissioner Dennis led the charge on supporting uh, the Aviation Museum a couple of years ago. I was happy to support that. I talked to the manager about, since it is out of you know our normal budgetary process, if there was a way we could do something for our employees with that $50,000. And I see that you put that here in uh, bullet number eight. So is this a free membership for all Sedgwick County employees, or is that families? Or what, what type of memberships are we talking about? I think we it would have to talk about what okay. you would be thinking. Uh, we could have a special event where families could come, and we'd have a special event for open house for every employee, or we could have a bundle of memberships that you could give away to employees that excel, mm -hmm. you know, your employee of the month in, in departments. I think we can work that kind of however the manager. Okay, so and, that's and not firm then. It, it's not. I, I wanted to leave it pretty open-ended because okay. I anticipated somebody go, now what does that mean? So right. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's what we were thinking. I know uh, the Historical Museum gives us passes that we're able to give out to events. I know Commissioner Dennis is very uh, diligent in giving out those passes, but but some way that that we can justify so we don't get every museum in town and every nonprofit in town coming off budget saying, hey, we need fifty thousand dollars for this, this, or this, um, particularly when this is a city museum. But but I am supportive and would love to continue that discussion to see. It makes a lot of sense if we do something to benefit our employees, and I think. Uh, you know, Manager Stoles is always trying to look for different and unique ways to do something for our employees. So this is a, a good marriage, I think. Well, I, I agree with you. And what I believe is that, like I said, I want people to come and see it. Yeah. So uh, I'm welcoming all Sedgwick County employees and their families because I, I think once you get people in there, much like Commissioner Cruz and their families, you start to see what – what it looks like. Right. I run into so many people. I'm out in the community and they say, oh, I've never been to the Aviation right. Museum. And I'm thinking, wow. But you want people to visit, take pictures, post it on their <laughs> social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. You know, when you don't have a marketing budget, that free public relations works really well <laughs> really for you. Really well. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, I think you're right. We'll work that out in detail. Okay. I look forward to working with whoever the, the commission wants me to to figure out how do we um, make it very worthwhile for Sedgwick County to support us. Mm -hmm. I've got a table for the gala reserved too yeah. this this Saturday for for the county commissioners or their appointees to come and join us and and be part of the celebration of the uh, of the museum. So we can work all that out. I it's a full partnership as far as I'm concerned. It's not me taking the money and running and saying ha, 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 I got the money from the county. It's a full partnership because uh, I found after many years of service myself, partnerships are what gets things done in this community. When you can hook up a lot of people to a wagon, you can get things done. So I'm in it for the long haul with the county as far as a partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Howell. Thank you. I have a couple questions. On that 23,000 visitors, do we, do we know what percentage of those are local versus tourists from outside our community? I'd like to say I do, Commissioner, but the staff has been so overworked and tight. They got the numbers, but trying to figure out the mix. Now, I think we could probably glean that, but that, that's almost history, and we're going to look forward. Uh, I'm working on some databases. I'm, uh, peop a lot of people sign in and give their email addresses or their home addresses. Uh, I'm working on getting a database so we have a mailing list, and then we'll start to find out the demographics of who comes. I don't have that answer right now, but I can tell you, once again, my old history, I knew where every shopper came from at Target. 
I mean, I pulled the checks out every night and looked at them and said, oh, Derby, Andover, oh, Ark City. I could give you percentages, all that, and we'll do that at the museum. You got to know who you're serving before you can market. Right. You know, you can shoot a lot of cannons and not hit anything, but you really want to shoot a shotgun. Yeah, it sounds like, it, you know, this, this might, I'll just say for me and my family, when we go to different communities, especially when my kids were younger, we would target aviation museums. And so I know there's people got to be doing the same thing, I'm sure, come, come to Wichita. But it'd be nice to know kind of, you know, eco-devo-wise eco what the impact would be. So if you can imagine people coming into Wichita, and that's one of the things they do when they're here. They're also spending money other ways, I'm sure. So, Well, um, if, if I could, sure. I, I just was at the Eisenhower Airport, and, you know, the, they got the kiosk there with all the pamphlets. And I called one of our staff people and said, bring some brochures out. And he said, we just took 200 out and filled it up last week. And I go, they're all gone. So that means that visitors, I mean, that's just an anecdotal thing, but 200 people picked up our brochure out of that kiosk in like a week. So that tells us that people, I don't know if they're local or traveling, but people are picking up and, and seeing it. So. Do you have a plan how this 50000 would be utilized yet? I mean, is this already determined, like, where is it going to go and what it's going to do? Or is this, I guess, is there a, is there a plan on exactly what the 50000 would be used for? Well, everything I'm going to tell you is unvarnished, no. Okay. Uh, I have general categories of where I would, would put it, some in administration, just to be sure that we're continuing it so I can do the executive director's job without worrying about what bill we're going to pay or whether I can keep staff at 40 hours a week or whatever. Some of it will go to building maintenance, some of it a little bit maybe to marketing. I've got to analyze it. I've, I've not spent the money before I got it is a good answer. <laughs> I'm, until I've got the money in my hand and see the most pressing need, I'm not s assuming that I'm spending it. And just to be clear, Wichita is also playing. I mean, I assume you've talked to Wichita Council, and there's going to be some, I guess, some additional support from them at some point as well. Is that part of the partnership we're looking at? Here? I, I'm hope. I'm hopeful. Uh, I've I visited with the council, with the manager, with the mayor. Uh, they own the building, and there, it needs a new roof and tuck pointing, and that's a big ticket and we're trying to move that up into their capital improvements uh, it doesn't make sense to have an event center we had a great wedding four thousand dollar price tag wedding or, or yes reception and the roof was leaking this weekend and the city had to bring out shop vacs and humidif dehumidifiers and load up the downstairs so we've got to get that taken care of and I am hopeful the city will move that up into their capital projects and get that out of the way so that's a big ticket now is that the same ask it's, it's a different ask but they it is money that they're going to put into the building and the facility um, I'm curious um, when, when you and I talked I think the intent right now this is a one-time ask from us we're not it's not like ongoing support we're not I'm not talking about that today we're talking about this is a one-time infusion trying to get aviation using back on its feet type of thing absolutely i think i even put that in the the ask that it's a one-time deal now there may be other places that the county i, I know that you had a five-year plan of fifty thousand a year to help with the b52 restoration uh it's not my call where you, where the county wants to put their money uh you, you'll figure that out uh but right now, it's a one-time ask to give me a little breathing room to do the things I think need to be done. Because the I can't be just part of the staff unlocking doors and doing, you know, cleaning the facility. I've got to be out pounding the drum and raising money. And that needs to be stabilized. The staff needs to be stabilized so I can do what I need to do for the 10-year future of the entity. I also want to say I appreciate you coming out and presenting this to us today. I think it's important to our community, and and I know that uh, I want it to survive. So I think it's good that you're out here talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other questions. Uh, Tim, I appreciate you coming today. Uh, a couple things. Uh, we need to get with the manager, with the uh, commissioner at some point and find out who all is going to go to the gala on Saturday so that uh, 
we can fill the, tech, the chairs up and at the table. Um, I support uh, providing the fifty thousand uh, dollars to help uh, uh, stabilize the museum. I think it's a, a jewel in our community. It's just it's not everyone has found that jewel yet. So we need to get them so that they can. Uh, do we need to? Uh, if we've got consensus on the board today, do we need to go further? Does it need to come before us on an agenda, or can you take it? Okay. And uh, the other thing is that uh, if we uh, do decide to put 50000 in, um, we need to do our part uh, to help him get free advertising, so we need a press release uh, to go out that shows what's going on so that uh, we can help uh, show that uh, be good partners. Okay? Very good. Well, Tim, thank you very much for being here today. Thanks for letting me back in the big house. I've <laughs> you know, I thought maybe I was banned from here for a while, so... <laughs> No, that was self-banning. I had two grandsons to romp around with. So thanks for having me back. Thanks for giving me the, the forum to visit a little bit about one of those hidden jewels. I think you're right. It's a treasure in our community that needs to be preserved and to tell the rich history and the rich future of aviation in our community. And, and I guarantee you we're going to do that over the next year. So thank Good. you very much for having me. And when me. you're looking at uh, different exhibits, don't forget we had missiles here uh, in Wichita at one point in time, and I'm a missile guy. So I always re want to remind everyone that uh, we do have a heritage of having ICBMs uh, located in this area. So I will now refer to you as David the Missile Dennis. <laughs> just the, the, the missile guy. Just the missile guy. <laughs> just the missile guy. Well, I, okay, we'll ha I'll even work on an exhibit. <laughs> Good. Titans. They had 18 of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there is a rich history here, and we need to capture it. So thanks for having me. I, I'm not going to stay for the rest of the meeting, although I think it will be compelling, and I will enjoy it. <laughs> it will be, Tim. You should stay. <laughs> Gosh, you had to say that. Now I feel obligated. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Policy 1105, which is uh, the recommendations for at-large board appointments. Uh, I electronically sent it to you about 8.15, 8.30 this morning. Um, and uh, I, I think what we need to do is just kind of quickly go through the full policy again. Item number five has some new information in it that you want to focus on and give us some guidance on whether you want to uh, set this for an agenda. We tentatively have it on the agenda for a week from tomorrow, but depending on the will of the board today, uh, we can be flexible with that. So with that, is there any questions or any issues, and or do you want Justin to kind of walk us through it? What's your preference? Any questions on the latest update? Everybody happy with the latest version? I guess we put it on the agenda. Pretty easy then. Okay. <laughs> no, pretty right. easy. Okay. Um, I'm just going to let it lay then. I'm, we'll, we'll, Good idea. We'll <laughs> um, let's do a quick agenda review then for next uh, Wednesday's uh, meeting. There are a couple of. Uh, is, remember, this is a rough draft. There's a couple of typos in here. We'll fix as we go through. Um, under appointments, uh, Commissioner Cruz has asked to be uh, taken off of WAMPO. Um, Kelly's here. Uh, Kelly Arnold has uh, graciously agreed to take her place. So we will add under uh, Commissioner Cruz's resignation the appointment of, uh, of Kelly to the, to the board. Uh, Tim will talk about under new business the uh, executive director position for exploration place. Um, and then we will bring this policy forward that we just uh, talked about here before as item uh, item D. And then we have board of bids and contract. And that's really all the new business we have for next week. Uh, under the consent uh, item, there is a dog kennel issue, and that's actually uh, in District 2. I think a lot of times this comes over from MAPD, and it's in City Council District 4, but it's in County Commission District Number 2 or 3, right? Who has? I think it's probably actually yours, Chairman. Because it's 247, that'd be District 3. So we'll change that on the on the list. I learned that's fairly routine. So, yes, sir. I want to mention item F. It is the permanent agreement of Commissioner 
you know, the plan department for what makes things happen, but that's the pathway between Ridley and Mulvaney. The state lab job and the matching share will be split three ways between the county equally, the county, Derby, Mulvaney, about fifty-six thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars a piece. So nice job. It will connect. We've been working on the pathway for some time. Does this complete it? it no, it's not, it hasn't started yet. I thought we'd been working pathways all around down the by pathway, Spirit. And, the aviation pathway up from okay. Derby up to MacArthur. Down and this doesn't connect to that? Long. This is a different one. This and this is getting ready to start. This doesn't connect to that? Uh, I would say no, because this is down going on Rock Road, and the other one is up going on all of it. That will be a goal to get all that connected at some time. There's lots of paths that, that are close to being connected. It's all through the city. So Lampo is working on that with all the uh, cities. But this is a great partnering deal. That's all I was trying to get at. Derby, Mulvane County. What's the total size of the project? Yeah. What's the total size of the project? It's about 850000 The three units are in for about 150, 160. Okay. 80, 20. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> yeah. I guess my answer to that question would be it does connect Mulvaney to Derby, and Derby, of course, is connected to Wichita through the aviation pathway, and Wichita is connected everywhere else. So, in a sense, you can go from Mulvaney to Goddard or wherever you want to go, right? In a sense. Okay. You have a hard time getting to Goddard. I know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> but my point is you can go from Wichita wherever the paths go from there. So. Anywhere except to District 3. There you go. <laughs> that was all we had for today, sir. Rails to trails. <laughs> all right. Commissioner. Can't get over 235 in the big day. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. I'm always, always worried when one an engineer more. has one more thing. <clears throat> Last, we're having a equipment rodeo out of the West Star 47 to West Equipment rodeo. And equipment rodeo. Yeah, what this is, we did it last year. I did not invite you last year because we didn't know if it would be a success or a failure. It was a great success last year. So we're having it again. So if you want to be there, like, 8.45 Thursday morning, that's when we start. Now, what, what we do is a competition uh, between dump trucks, and there's an obstacle course they follow, and then it goes by timing, and then how many things you hit and knock over. It's a subtraction. So, and they go forward and reverse. So, uh, then also we have the motor graders that do it. And actually, on that we have a pylon, and then we have some tennis balls on top of that, and they have to be good enough to take the blade, <coughs> stick it out, and be able to knock the tennis ball off without moving the pylon. It's, it's a great deal. We make our own trophies with our welder makes them. With, it's, they're very nice, uh, so you'll have to see those. And uh, looking forward to it. We had, a, we had a good time last year. It's a good team building thing. And uh, just want to throw that out if you want to be there. And, and if anybody else. Remind the commissioners that the engineer works directly for you. Does not work. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to remind you all that work comp is self funded. <laughs> Year it went great, so um, I want waivers. No, and they do it one at a time. It's not like there's two or three going at once where they can bump into each other. So it's, and par participation ribbons if those that don't win. Um, yeah, and, and if one of you wants to try it, uh, we've had people uh, okay. actually offer to try it. Lacey, was, Lacey was, wanted me to ask that. That's going to be my question: is as I want to drive the motor grader. We'll all run the other direction and let you go. <laughs> if she rappelled down a building, she could surely drive a dump truck, so, or whatever it's called. I can do anything. Good. <laughs> At least if you can add that to our calendars, uh, it's an optional Thursday. event. Will there be a video made of this, Tony? There should be. I'm volunteering your staff. Is there a ticket? Do you have to buy it? All right. Commissioners, anything? Anything for commissioners? Might do some donuts. 
Nope, I'm headed out to go volunteer with the firefighters. Our, our Cedric County Fire Department is out at the zoo today with Pleasant Valley fifth graders. Cool. So they're you out. wear your helmet? Ooh, I should take it. Good idea. <laughs> Show off for all those fifth graders. Yeah. Show them who's boss. Only two commissioners <laughs> have a helmet. So. Whoa. That's some smack talking today. Good. All right. Staff, anything? Good. Electives. Anyone else in the room? Okay, let's go to work. Oh, that was